Happy to introduce our first speaker for today, Dr. Carol Denny. She's a professor of radiology at University of Ottawa in Ottawa, Canada. And she will speak to us this morning. Uh, you know, the first session is on observational skills related to chest radiographs. And she's going to speak on a favorite topic of mine, which is lines, stripes, and interfaces. Carol? Thank you very much for the invitation to speak, and I think it's, it's a chest radiologist's favorite uh, topic. Uh, it's very, very dear to our, all of our hearts. So hopefully, um, I will remember everything that's in my recorded talk, if uh, just have a look at it. If, uh, if I've missed anything, uh, you have it there uh, for uh, permanently. I have no financial disclosures, and you know, CT increasingly is being used to investigate thoracic disease, but conventional radiography remains the first line investigation. It's crucial to be familiar with the interaction between the lung, the pleura, and the mediastinal structures to recognize abnormalities that may require additional imaging. So at the end of this presentation, the participants should recognize normal lines, stripes and interfaces on chest radiographs, identify abnormal thickening and displacement of these structures, localize an abnormality in the chest based upon which lines, stripes and interfaces are abnormal, and formulate a short differential diagnosis prior to recommending further imaging. Let's start with the anterior junction line. It's formed by the apposition of the visceral and parietal pleura of the antromedial aspect of the lungs with a small amount of intervening mediastinal fat. It may look like a stripe uh, when there's a lot of fat in the mediastinum or when there is intervening thymic tissue. Here we see this oblique line and it separates or has a V-shape at the top when it becomes separated by the mediastinal fat and the great vessels superiorly. Note that it doesn't go above the clavicles. The inverted V-shape inferiorly is there uh, because there is the heart that displaces the lungs laterally so it disappears. It can be displaced uh, when there, or distorted when, for instance, there is volume loss, and as in this patient who had a prior right lower lobectomy, and the overexpanded left lung pushes it towards the right side because there's volume loss on the right. Here we see displacement of the line towards the contralateral side because there's increased volume in the pleura on expiration. So you can see it being displaced by increased volume on the right side towards the left. The posterior junction line now, it's formed by apposition of the visceral and parietal pleura of the posteromedial portion of the lungs posterior to the esophagus and anterior to the third through the fifth thoracic vertebrae. It is much more superior than the anterior junction line and extends above the clavicles. And it is separated superiorly by the posterior mediastinal fat. And inferiorly, the V-shape is separated by the aortic arch. Uh, as well as the azagus and the um, intercostal veins. It may be displaced when there is pathology posteriorly located in the chest. You can see here it is bulging, it is separated uh, by an opacity which is located very posteriorly. It can be due to uh, enlarged lymph nodes, problems with the esophagus, uh, sometimes neurogenic tumors. In this case, we can see that it is displaced because of a markedly dilated esophagus containing uh, debris in a patient with achalasia. Let's move on now to the right paratracheal stripe, which is e seen in, uh, on chest x-rays in up to 90% of patients. 
It's formed by the visceral and the parietal pleura of the right upper lobe coming in contact with the mediastinal fat and the right tracheal wall. And it's usually one to four millimeters in thickness. And we can see that uh, it extends down to the right tracheobronchial angle uh, at the level of the azagous arch on uh, the chest x-ray and the corresponding CT and coronal axial CT and re coronal reformats. It can be widened in the setting of uh, enlarged lymph nodes. Um, that's the most common uh, cause, as well as other uh, tumors abutting the trachea. Here's an unusual cause for widening of that uh, paratracheal stripe. You can see here very low density, water density structure adjacent to the esophagus, and a nice coronal reformat here in this patient with a bronchogenic cyst. The left paratracheal stripe. It's formed by contact between the left upper lobe and the mediastinal fat, plus or minus the vessels adjacent to the left tracheal wall, often seen more like a reflection uh, where, you, where it disappears uh, as the subclavian and the carotid vessels exit the thorax. So you can see here on the chest x-ray with, uh, on CT, the axial CT shows some fat and then the uh, subclavian or carotid vessels exiting the thorax. And it can be widened uh, in the setting of, again, uh, tumors located posteriorly uh, adjacent to the trachea, lymphadenopathy, um, uh, neurogenic tumors and uh, problems, uh, esophageal tumors. In this case, we can see marked widening of that stripe, as you can see on the coronal reformat, and this is due to a very large uh, esophageal cancer in this 60-year-old woman. Now the aortopulmonary window. It is uh, bounded superiorly by the bottom of the aortic uh, arch, and superiorly by the left pulmonary artery. On this axial CT, you can see the boundaries of the uh, aortopulmonary window by the uh, posterior aspect of the ascending aorta and then anteriorly, uh, posteriorly the anterior aspect of the descending aorta and then medially the uh, left uh, main stem bronchus and esophagus. And usually this line is either concave or straight. Um, when it is concave, it, is, uh, it can be normal, but if it was previously concave and becomes a bit convex, then it is definitely abnormal and requires further investigation. Here note the convexity in uh, the AP window and shown as well on the CT and the wonderful uh, correlate on the coronal reformat in this patient with sarcoidosis and enlarged lymph nodes in that location. Moving on to the aortopulmonary stripe, this is perhaps less commonly discussed. It's formed uh, by the mediastinal interface, uh, formed by anterior pleura of the left lung in contact with the mediastinal fat, anterolateral to the left pulmonary artery and aortic arch. It's usually a straight line. And on the CT, it corresponds to the uh, pleura of the lung abutting the fat and or the ascending uh, aorta, the lateral aspect. And you can see what it, how it appears on the coronal reformat. Here we see it as a stripe because of a pneumomediastinum, and it's very well outlined by gas in the mediastinum and then air in the lung in the adjacent lung. And in this patient, there is adenopathy anteriorly, which is causing it to bulge. And again, correlation on a coronal reformat. The azagoesophageal recess is formed by the interface between the air and the posterior medial right lower lobe and the fat adjacent to the esophagus and azagous vein anterior to the spine, 
from the Azagus Arch to the aortic hiatus. And this line ends in the subcarinal region uh, at the uh, level of the azagus arch. And it is formed by the uh, mediastinal, the lung, posterior lung, abutting the mediastinal fat and the esophagus as well as the azagus posteriorly. It is, uh, it may be a little bit uh, con cave towards the left uh, in younger individuals and usually is a little bit either a straight or convex in the mid thorax and then is straight inferiorly. And the most common cause of uh, displacement of this is a hiatal hernia by far. Here in this patient it is displaced in the mid uh, thorax by a very large esophageal cancer. And you can see the correlate on the um, coronal reformat. In this other patient, we can see displacement more superiorly, and that's due to subcarinal adenopathy. Now moving on to the right paravertebral stripe. It is formed by the right lung and the pleura in contact with the posterior mediastinal fat and soft tissues. It usually extends from the eighth to the twelfth ribs. And it may appear as a line due to uh, what's called a mock band phenomenon due to lateral inhibition of the retina when there's an abrupt change in density. Here we can see it on CT. So the fat adjacent to the spine here. And it can be widened in the presence of uh, neurogenic tumors or other abnormalities that are very posterior adjacent to the spine. The left paravertebral stripe is also formed by contact of the left lung and pleura with the posterior mediastinal fat and adjacent soft tissues. And it extends from the aortic arch to the diaphragm. And you can see that this uh, line or edge is usually uh, medial to the descending aorta, but it can, uh, in the lower thorax, extend lateral to the descending aorta. And it can be widened in the presence of very uh, posterior uh, abnormalities adjacent to the spine, especially neurogenic tumors. In this patient, we can see abnormal displacement of that line and a corresponding abnormality of the left paravertebral stripe as well. And we can see that on CT, on the axial images, as well as the coronal reformat in this patient who has extramedullary hematopoiesis. The azagoesophageal recess is preserved here because there is still lung tucked in against the esophagus, um, and so there's nothing abutting that, and so that azagoesophageal uh, uh, stripe is still preserved. Now let's talk about the posterior tracheal or tracheoesophageal or retrotracheal stripe. This is a vertical stripe on the lateral chest x-ray formed by air in the trachea and right lung outlining the posterior tracheal wall and intervening soft tissues. It's usually uh, one to, uh, sorry, two and a half to five and a half millimeters in thickness depending on whether the esophagus abuts it uh, without any air in it. So it's a bit thicker when you're um, uh, measuring the entire esophagus with it. And it forms the anterior margin of the retrotracheal triangle, which is bounded anteriorly by that stripe, posteriorly by the vertebrae, and inferiorly by the aortic arch, and superiorly by the thoracic inlet. And it most often is abnormal in the presence of developmental uh, aortic abnormalities. As you can see in this case, there's widening of that paratracheal stripe, due to a vessel located posterior to the esophagus in a patient with a right-sided aortic arch and an aberrant left subclavian artery. But it can also be abnormal in esophageal problems 
uh, or in patients who have lymphadenopathy or neurogenic tumors. Now to the back wall of the bronchus intermedius. I have to talk about the hilum to really cover this area properly. And so we'll start with the upper lobe, left upper lobe bronchus, which is this um, uh, low uh, density or this hole that you see that's well outlined. And anterior to that is the right pulmonary artery as it exits the right hilum. Above that is the left pulmonary artery going over the left upper lobe bronchus. And just above that is the right upper lobe bronchus that doesn't have a vessel or an opacity above it, so it's an incomplete circle. And through that, we can see the uh, bronchus intermedius, which courses obliquely or straight down over about two and a half um, centimeters. And that is the bronchus intermedius, and it can be thickened uh, in, uh, di from different uh, causes. The correlate on CT here is that bronchus intermedius and we can see the back wall there, the lung tucking in behind it and outlining it. And so we can see how it can become thickened most commonly in pulmonary edema. But this patient has a, a normal um, um, back wall of the bronchus intermedius which becomes thickened several months later and this is due to adenopathy that's developed in this patient with sarcoid. So leaving you with a few uh, teaching points, analysis on the chest x-ray requires a systematic approach. You have to endeavor to identify the lines, stripes, and interfaces on every single chest x-ray. Once you're familiar with the normal appearance, you'll be able to quickly recognize abnormal thickening, displacement, and contour deformities that'll lead you to place the abnormality in the correct anatomical space and formulate an appropriate differential. So thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>